Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started so that we can stay on time. Uh, thank you all for coming today. My name is Alyssa Spomer. If you don't know me, um, I am the student chair for Husky Adapt. Um, and today I'm very excited. We have both Dr. Anat Caspi and Dr. Richard Ladner um, here to talk about their respective organizations. Um, so the way that this will go is we're going to have each of them just kind of talk about um, the centers that they're representing today. Um, and then we're going to open it up for questions from you all. Uh, so if you would like to um, submit questions on a, a Word document, we have one. I'll post the link in the chat. Um, you can also post questions directly in the chat if you want um, to include them there. Uh, or you can feel free to unmute yourself, turn your video on, do whatever you want to do to ask those questions at the end as well. Um, one quick accessibility note, if you would like closed captioning, it's available at the bottom of the Zoom window um, that you can turn on um, and let me know if you have any other questions. Um, and with that, I'm actually going to, to turn it over to uh, Anat Caspi first to talk about the Tasker Center for Accessible Technology. Hello. Let me make sure I'm sharing my screen. Uh, okay. Uh-uh. Yikes. It's uh, did it. Ah, pardon me, having some technical issues here. The wonders of Zoom. Okay. Are you seeing this in reasonable um, resolution? It's okay? Yeah, it looks great. Fantastic, okay. Well, hi everybody. Um, thank you so much for having me. As Alyssa mentioned, my name is Anat Caspi. I am um, the director of the Tasker Center for Accessible Technology at Paul G. Allen School for Computer Science and Engineering. And our mission is to take research that's done at UW and beyond and develop it to deployable form and sustainably offer end products that really enhance independence and access to community living for people with disabilities. And we focus on people with mobility limitations, but I believe that many of our lessons um, can translate really well to addressing needs of communities in general. And um, wait, uh, why is this not moving? There we go, okay. <laughs> um, accessibility and equal opportunity for, for all, especially in the digital age, have become really important over the last several decades, but certainly in our most recent pandemic times, um, very important. In one form or another, the concept of accessibility is being considered to a greater um, extent in most projects that develop interactive systems. But the concept really tends to vary among different professions, different cultures, different interest groups. And so this idea of like universal design, design for all, universal access, inclusive design, participatory design, these are all kinds of um, ideas that circle around the notion of equity, especially in digital um, technology development. But all of them are different names that for very different approaches that largely focus on increasing accessibility of interactive systems for the widest possible range of use. Um, and so part of what we're trying to do at the Tasker Center is examine the ways in which these different concepts differ, understand those underlying philosophies, and then really be able to take some of these methodologies to action in order to demonstrate how we can take from development to deployment and translation to real world populations. 
And so um, today, what I wanted to just talk about um, are some of the opportunities that we have in the center um, to, for involvement uh, with the task force center. So um, we're gonna start talking about uh, accessibility and the design process. So I touched upon that a little bit. And so <laughs> we try to stay away from naming one, one particular framework, but we are really intent on nothing for us without us in the sense that we always design with community members um, in order to what believe to achieve what we believe to be the best possible product that takes um, the most wide um, user experience into um, account. And so our motto is kind of designing for the fullness of human experience. And we really try to embody that in what we do. And so some of the projects that we undertake involve different kinds of communities of practice. And we've kind of curated different communities. Um, right now, our most prominent communities are around transportation and mobility is one. And then the other has to do with um, education and um, information specifically around uh, fabrication and life hacks. And, you know, you guys are in toy adaptation that kind of falls into part of, of that. Um, and those are sort of the two main communities that we're currently like honing in and, and curating and, and talking to. Uh, but our process really goes beyond just working with the communities of practice. It means that we have this idea of not like a linear pipeline, but more of an iterative sort of methodology um, in terms of how we work and participate with different communities. So some of the projects that we've been um, working on, um, and so you, you get an idea of like, you know, if, if you wanna do research with us, you could, um, who would you be engaging with outside of just our internal group? Um, we look a lot at computer supported cooperative work. What are some effective tools for participatory action research in different kinds of communities and ways to explore new ideas of designing with and by communities that have been technologically disadvantaged in the past. So that's um, one area. Um, and uh, with this in mind, the, the communities that are currently working with us are uh, Portland State University, the US DOT, and the Inter-America Development Bank and G3ICT, which is a, a UN-sponsored non-governmental organization that's specifically targeting inclusivity in international settings. Um, the second area is fairness to accessing life hack information. And that's kind of what I was talking about. Um, we're gathering data on equity and fabrication and, and in hacking commons. So like when you go into Thingiverse, what is sort of the representation there and how well do people find what information they're trying to access? Um, so if I'm a person with a disability and I have a particular need and somebody says, oh yeah, you can 3D print that, how well can I can that person really access that information in a data commons like Thingiverse or Instructables or something like that? Um, the third part has to do with urban accessibility. That's kind of what the Task Force Center is currently most known for. We do a lot of work on data standards around pedestrian mobility in the built environment. And through that, we've created a lot of data science tools and visualizations for both individuals with disabilities, um, like one of our most prominent products out there that's actually being used on a daily basis is called Access Map. Um, and it's currently in three different cities, but soon to be more. We're definitely scaling up at this point. Um, and you can certainly be instrumental in that. Um, but also there are a lot of data science tools and visualizations that help 
um, city planners and transit planners make more equitable decisions about where they allocate their resources. Because right now, when you ask a planner, like, how did you decide where to plop the 13 curb ramps that you have a budget for this year? There are really very few mechanisms that are data driven for individuals to make those kinds of decisions. And so um, we're really probing, like, how is equity addressed in these kinds of organizations and settings? Um, these are kind of the major three areas. I have other projects. Uh, I don't want to take up more time. I know I've kind of <laughs> taken my 10 minutes. So I'll stop there. But if you are interested um, in exploring working with us um, some more, please do contact us at uwtcat at uw.edu. Um, and I'm more than happy to explore different ideas um, on how we can collaborate. Thank you so much. And I appreciate the time today. Great. Thank you, Dr. Caspi. Uh, I guess at this point, does anyone have specific questions associated with the Tasker Center um, or any of the work that, that uh, Dr. Caspi has outlined so far? Um, <laughs> what does frosh mean is the first question. Oh, it's not freshman. Freshman, yeah. Is that so like <laughs> I knew it, but I don't know if I'm a good gauge either. <laughs> uh yeah, somebody has their hand raised. It looks like Naya, maybe. Um, yeah, I have a question about the speech technologies that you talked about at the beginning. Like, if you have any examples of this. Uh, so you're talking about speech generating devices? Um, you like mentioned at the beginning that the Tasker Center like develops technologies that um, improve the quality of life for people with speech impairment. So I was just wondering if you could elaborate on that. Right, so, so that's one of our foci. Currently we have just one project that extends to um, speech generating devices. And it's about, it's, it's actually more about exploring manners in which um, digital speech generation can be more animated and more expressive by way of like um, offering like tiny memes um, that become part of the supported expression so that, um, in order to alleviate some of the problems that exist in, in um, speech, using a speech generating device, like the fact that it's uh, certainly effectively much slower than typical speech. And so typically the correspondents are waiting. And so filling in that time with memes and expressive um, ways of um, sort of expressing intent and, um, an intonation and absence of the effective intonation of the, the digital speech. Those are um, some of the mechanisms that we're, we're testing um, how we can enhance speech with speech generating devices. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, if anyone think on your questions um, and we'll move into to Dr. Ladner's presentation on CREATE, um, which is a brand new center on campus that I'm excited to hear more about. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions in the meantime, you can populate the chat channel or our document that I have linked there as well. Um, so Dr. Ladner, if you're here and ready to, to present on CREATE, I'll pass it off to you. Sure, thank you. Um, let me see, I need to get the screen up. Okay. Uh, can you see these slides? Yes. And, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, Richard Ladner. I'm a professor emeritus in the um, Paul G. Allen School of Computer Science and Engineering. 
And um, I've been saying lately, this is my 50th year on the faculty at uh, University of Washington, that's five zero. So it's kind of like a milestone. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the uh, CREATE Center. It's a center for research and education on accessible technologies and experiences. And, and you might be hearing my dog barking. I apologize for that. Um, so uh, we have one mission. The CREATE's mission is to make technology accessible and to make the world accessible through technology. And it, it's, I mean, the University of Washington has maybe three or 400 centers, and, and this is one of the newest ones. We just started uh, uh, in 2020. So just as an overview, um, you know, we have a, a world-class faculty and students that uh, work in the center. Um, it's not a physical place. It's, it's more of a group, and we all have our own departments, and I'll go through the faculty in a little bit. <laughs> And we're looking to do impactful research and accessible technologies. That's kind of a, it's a very research focused um, uh, center. We also have educational initiatives uh, to teach students about accessibility. And we'll be talking about that in a, in a little while. And also we do translation just like the Tasker Center. We wanna get our, our, the things we do research out into the real world. Um, we take a, disability studies perspective, meaning that we think of disability as part of the diversity of, of life, uh, that uh, we're not worried about individual an individual's disability, we're worried more about how the environment and how uh, they can have access uh, to the world. And we're trying to raise a, a $10 million over the next five years, but we're starting with a Microsoft gift of, of 3 million and it's now, we now have about 3.5 million after this slide. So here's uh, the leadership. And you can see Anat is, is one of the people and uh, she's the director of translation. And so uh, the center is working with the Tasker Center and Anat is working with, with CREATE. Um, and so our founders, <clears throat> these are all the, 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 um, the nine founders, Jennifer Menkoff from uh, the Allen School, Jake Wilbrock from the iSchool, myself, and I'm the director of education. And the first two there are really directing the whole center. Um, Heather Feldner from um, the um, Rehab Medicine, Leah Feinletter from uh, HCDE, Human Centered Design and Engineering, James Fogarty, John Freilich from Again, the Allen School and Kate Cat Steele from Mechanical Engineering. And we, we weren't just thrown together, but uh, we've known each other for a long time and we've all been doing accessibility work of one form or another. And so we decided that it's time to, to coalesce into, into the center. So it's just starting. We had this inaugural gift uh, from, from Microsoft uh, and it was really supported by Jenny Le Flory, who is the the, um, and Brad Smith, uh, they were sort of our, our leaders there at Microsoft to help get this through. And Brad Smith said, the University of Washington has truly embraced accessibility in its culture, and we're proud to support its leadership in empowering people uh, with disabilities. So in terms of research, um, we're really into, uh, you know, doing uh, cross-cutting, excuse me, um, cutting edge research and designing, building and evaluating the next generation of accessible technologies. And of course, part of that would be doing, you know, things like surveys of, of, of people with disabilities to see what, what the needs are uh, to bring people with disabilities into our labs and even go out into the neighborhoods and to, and, and to organizations that support people with disabilities. So it, we want people with disabilities to be integrally, integrally involved uh, with the center. Um, we're also going to try to do some moonshots, some bigger projects, and uh, we have some ideas there. We're just getting started on that. Uh, most of our projects will be smaller projects. Um, so, you know, as technology changes, 
um, we have to react to it. Uh, new technologies come out like uh, a virtual reality and maybe it's not very accessible. And so we'll be working on things like that. In terms of education, which is the part I work on, we're gonna support teaching students and faculty about accessible technology and about accessible teaching and, and learning. Um, we're gonna to try to train the next generation of technology designers and engineers and product managers to champion accessibility when they go out into the workplace. Um, and we wanna create, wants to actively um, recruit and support students with disabilities as part of our research team. Uh, this is a lot of what I'm not talked about, this translation, and I should ask her to talk about it more. Uh, but translating activities from our research to the real world is one of our goals. And um, there's an example on the right there, which is at the bottom, <clears throat> which was the first example of making a touchscreen accessible that was done here at the University of Washington about 15 years ago. Um, and then Apple and other companies have put this, this kind of technology into the iPhone and Android phones and so on. So the translation goals are to enable create innovations to move to the work to the real world, just like the Tasker Center, support sustainable research deployments. So once they're in the real world, we'd like to be able to support them. Uh, establish cooperative relationships between researchers and, and the community. So there's a lot of overlap with the Tasker Center in terms of translation. And here's our picture of our faculty again and, and some of the awards they have. Um, uh, so they, they're really world-class, world-class faculty. So I wanted to talk about uh, one program that we just initiated, uh, the student mini grant program. And I think this is gonna give me a link to, uh, so that link, I should put that, this link in the chat. If I can get to the chat. Uh, I don't have the right screen here for the chat. I have to go, well, there it is. So you can look at that yourself. Oops. Get that out of the way. Okay. So this is a new program. Um, so it's a way to get money for a project if it's an accessibility research project. And, uh, and there's a way to apply for that. And you just have to be a UW student. Uh, it must be about accessibility research. If it involves human subjects, you have to do the IRB training and students must have a faculty advisor to help guide the student. And the student commits to providing a report or demo or something uh, to the create community. There's a limit of $2,000 uh, and that's limited to certain things like you can't pay your own salary or something like that, but it would be compensation for study participants, travel to a conference, for example, uh, funding for interpreting or captioning services or other justified costs. And then we have some evaluation criteria. <clears throat> Obviously you have to be eligible. Um, if you're a first time person to get one of these, uh, um, that would be an advantage. We don't want to just give it to the same person again and again. Uh, the student provides evidence of understanding the disability group that is in their target, and that would be expressed in the application. Uh, the target has a high potential for publication. Excuse me, the project has a high potential for publication as a paper or poster at a conference. And the budget follows the limitations I mentioned above. And the project is well formulated and doable within a reasonable amount of time, the proposed amount of time, which might be a quarter or two quarters or something like that. So this is an opportunity for students to, to do it. There's a template here that you should follow in your application. And eventually it would be a PDF that you can upload at the application form. So one thing I was gonna add, let me go back to, uh, to this here. Um, if you look, and I'm gonna go back a slide or two. Uh, so you look at all these faculty members, um, you know, if you are interested in some research project and, it, 
not that you needed funding or anything like that, but uh, you could approach any of these faculty members and, and ask them about if you could join one of their projects. Or for example, Anat with her projects at the Tasker Center, uh, don't feel shy and, and please come and talk to them. So I think I'm done now and I'm happy to answer questions.